Hi, James here, and welcome to Contingency Now's YouTube channel. Today, we're going to talk about disaster recovery planning, or otherwise known as IT Information Technology Disaster Recovery Plan Development. So what is disaster recovery planning and what it is not? Here's what it is. It's the ability for your technology team, your technology workers, to rebuild, reconfigure, if you will, the supporting technologies in your business within the time frames desired or expected by your customers. Here's what it's not. It's not data backup. Sorry, but for for those out you for those of you out there in business land, if you got your uh, data backup and recovery plan put together just for data, that's not disaster recovery, and it will not save your business. Matter of fact, you're wasting your money. But that's my perspective. What you really need to do is put a disaster recovery plan together, and guess what? Data backup is a component of that. So, if you think that uh, data backup is disaster recovery, you're wrong. It is a piece of disaster recovery. Just a piece. Disaster recovery is pretty much down here, kind of below the app, around the applications and services level of the what? Of the critical revenue stream. So, you've got technologies in your, in your business that support products and services along the critical revenue path that are down here. And that's where we are residing. That's what we're talking about today. Also, from a contingency planning perspective, we have a, a contingency planning across the top, impact analysis and assessment in the middle, disaster recovery planning over here, business continuity planning over here. So yes, disaster recovery planning is a component of contingency planning just like data backup is a component of disaster recovery. A practical DRP. Contingency now um, highly recommends putting together a practical DRP. What do we mean by that? What I mean is if you have in your shop or if you've seen a humongous monster of a document and that's the business of disaster recovery plan, once again, you're probably wasting your time and money. I hate to tell you that, but it's true. What we call that in our industry is a door stopper. Here's what we're making. Usually what happens is you put a lot of business continuity stuff in there and disaster recovery. There's so much information. There's so much to do. You put all one big binder. The problem with that is during the time of need, who's got time to thumb through all that information? You don't have the time to do it. And nobody's going to do it. And most people aren't even going to recognize where to find it and how to get to it in the time of need. Here's a recommendation. Instead of that great big binder, break it out. Now, we're talking disaster recovery for information technology here, okay, folks? So break it out into, say, its constituent parts. I got my web server here, and I got my SQL database here. So, what are the key stepwise procedures on reconstituting and redeveloping or rebuilding those systems and those applications that support my critical revenue stream, as we showed along the critical revenue path? Well, you can break it out in its, in its own constituent documentation sets. Call them playbooks, if you will, okay? Anything you'd like, but it works better. It's, it's more streamlined and more focused. Plus, it aligns the knowledge workers with respect to the technologies that support your business. So now, instead of having a great big binder, you've got multiple, uh, multiple pieces of documentation that supports the recoverability of those systems and applications. Much more, quote, practical. Recovery teams. Contingency now in our documentation recommends four types of recovery teams across IT. Your network, your database, your desktop, and your server. When I say server, it could be a computing device of some sort. So the pretty much 80-20 rule, 80% 80 of the time when we go into a business, they're going to need those four types of people, of teams, recovery teams, to recover your infrastructure within IT that supports your business. Those four types. Disaster declaration. What does that mean to IT? What that means is if your, uh, down, if, if your system or systems or, infra, or infrastructure is down for less than your recovery time, less than the recovery time objective of that system, then we identify that as an incident. And it's managed as an incident. You manage it internally and you move down the road. However, if that incident turns into a disaster, i.e. it means your uh, downtime is going to exceed your recovery time objective, 
or objectives, then you really should declare a disaster. And there's a whole different set of procedures to do that. Contingency now, contingency now in our documentation says has that broken out accordingly. Okay? Also, keep in mind, recovery time objectives are externally facing, not internal. It's not what your what that's not what your um, contracts can do from your outsource environment or what your IT shop can do internally. Recovery time objectives should be defined on or by their customers. What are their needs and expectations for those products and services which you're selling and supporting to them? That's where it's at. IT workgroup recovery. Once again, contingency now recommends 80-20 rule. So in the time of need, when all the stuff hits a rotating fan and people are running around and the pressure's on and, are, and you're losing money on, on a minute by hour by daily basis, you're going to need approximately 20% of your knowledge workers immediately to take control of your system's environment, 20% on an average. And just like in HR, you're going to need 20% of those people. In finance, you probably need 20% of those people. Bottom line is, in, inside the information technology, you're going to need about 20% immediately to take care of, of, of the recovery of those applications and systems now. Remember, the key objective here is what? In IT, reduce the amount of systemic downtime as much as possible. Okay? It's going to happen. You're always going to get downtime sooner or later. Something's going to happen sooner or later. It's Murphy's Law. That's just the way it is. But you want to be able to have a disaster recovery plan inside your business, especially that's supported by your IT shop, that reduces that downtime as much as possible. Because the longer you're down, the more money it's going to cost you. It's going to save you a lot of money. What is a command center with respect to IT? A command center is a place where people, once again, those 20 percenters, uh, go to to make key decisions on the recoverability of your system's environment. Now, that might be an off-site data center. It might be a work group recovery center that's adjacent to a data center. It might be somebody's home. It might be in the, in the, in the basement of a church. It might be in a hotel room. I don't know. All I can tell you is whatever fits your business needs for IT, that's where it needs to be. Also, with respect to command centers, you need to get them off the grid, meaning separate. Your command center needs to be ge geographically far enough away from your key location to where it supports the command center is supported by a separate set of utilities. Okay? Water, electric, gas, separate set. You don't want to be in the same space. Keep that in mind when you put together a command center or, or, or you're um, signing up contracts with a data center or an off-right recovery group center, whatever it is, it's got to be, you know, from a technological perspective, it's got to be off the grid from the operating key location of your business. All right? Maintenance and exercises with respect to disaster recovery planning. Contingency now recommends minimum once a year. So, here's my web server. These are stepwise procedures of recovering that web server. Once a year, I'm going I'm to run an exercise on that guy. Okay? Make sure it works. Exercises do not pass fail. Exercises are just what they are. You're there to learn. It's a learning environment. This is, this is a perpetual learning environment. There is no pass fail. If it doesn't work, you don't fire your people, your knowledge workers. You just, you know, inform them that, hey, let's try it again. Let's make it so it does work, and guess what? Make the changes to your documentation. Which, by the way, Maintenance of documentation should be done quarterly or at a minimum quarterly or whenever your systems environment, your applications and your, and your computing uh, devices, your infrastructure, if there's any major changes in that from IT that supports products and services, so let's say you're in a merger and acquisition phase, you're moving, you've got new products and services coming online and you've got new technologies to support that, that's a major change. And you're going to need to change your disaster recovery plan to meet that need. Okay? Which means you're going to need to go back in your documentation sets and make those changes accordingly based upon your maintenance schedule. Don't forget, forget to keep the logs. So in a nutshell, at a very high level, that's disaster recovery planning. Keep it focused to your information technology department, your ITIS. Security applications and devices and appliances are in there as well.
okay? So, without further ado, I want to thank you very much for watching us today and discussing disaster recovery planning and DRP with us. We really appreciate it. Next on the list for next week is going to be what? Business continuity planning. Thank you very much. I'm James Myers, and this is Contingency Now. We'll see you then. Thank you.